my name is Kim Richard. I'm the Director of Additional Office Architects. Um, thank you for having me present to you today. Um, so this is our Mary Street house. Um, in fact, I'll hold on this for a second. Starting on the diagram, this is a diagram of the, th the two elevated forms that are graphically presented as, uh, I, I guess, mineral massive figures to the public realm, but they are materially and socially secluded sanctuary islands within the program. Uh, the site, a little red dot, if you know St Kilda West, uh, that's the bay to the bottom of the park, up the top, and the site is smack bang on the junction on, on the side of Canterbury Road. So it has, um, it's a heritage alterations and additions, but a lot of the work is um, creating a safe harbour for the family on a pretty busy um, arterial road. Uh, the floor plan, so north is that diagonally up in the corner. Uh, the frontage street is to the left of screen and Canterbury Road is that long broad side to the top. There is actually a laneway, um, so it's this three-sided in the round project. Um, entering right here, so entering into the heritage component of the house, um, th uh, the kind of maintaining the heritage forms then starting to have small gestures loosening up the grip. The entry or the passage from old to new is from this hallway. You can see the kind of a minor curve, a middle curve, and then um, jostling out and erupting into a fluid geometry of um, brickwork walls that s allow a set series of outdoor, indoor, outdoor rooms that then wrap around the side and create that defensive wall, um, allowing the northern sun to come in over that corner to create that um, acoustic and spatial privacy from the street. Those two formal graphic first floor elements I was speaking about before are a removed retreat studio um, looking back over the laneway and the principal bedroom suite. So two circulation paths up the southern side of the house. Um, bedroom suite here with its own private um, outdoor courtyard, uh, robe and bathing space. So this um, en suite has a curved hook in that apex with a skylight which is actively aligned to that um, the light court from that outdoor courtyard. Um, both of which are um, I guess the formal gesture of them hold that skylight which penetrates into the dining space below. That dining space being held deep within the plan, uh, bringing that natural daylight which is a, I guess a fulcrum spatial point between the living room, the kitchen and that dining space. And also a target of entry when you come down the hallway. I'll very quickly jump through those. That's uh, showing that's that kind of sense of arrival through the hallway from the heritage and that merging um, shift of language into the social spaces and those two private, materially different, socially different re um, retreats above. Uh, so moving around the outside very quickly, um, and just a hint of the language uh, hold around here, um, having those cues of the interiority, the external palette and the internal palette uh, are continuous, creating that sense of outdoor, indoor rooms um, that you can have a gesture of here. So this side wall, which is that defensive protective gesture of the house itself, becomes the inside walls and creates that, um, hooks and drags that garden space right into the outdoor and then into the lounge room spaces. So um, restoration of the house, so new Baltic floorboards, uh, new concrete ceiling that holds up behind that entry, that arch in the entryway and kind of lures you down into that, into the new social spaces of the house, um, and making sure from a contemporary, from an old, from a con to a contemporary transition, uh, you can see that the new contemporary doors are physically protrude out 40 mil from the wall, uh, taking the cues of those architraves and creating those ripples of change. So it's not an immediate old to new junction; it's a series of small triggers um, that result. I won't do that. <laughs> I'll take you room by room. As you come down, uh, subtle calm gestures in those heritage rooms, so those tall ceilings. The original shape of the room is the skirting board line below, uh, where there was an old fireplace. Uh, the new cornicing above shifts into that bulkhead, um, allowing us to get that um, air conditioning robe and study space within the thickness of that room, but keeping the cohesive sense of the detailing, the heritage ornamentation, and the calm colours allowing that light to balance through the spaces. Uh, the bathroom holding one of the existing bedroom spaces and looking onto um, a retained courtyard to the south, um, completely covered in micro cement, uh, rendered with a cast in situ formed um, bathtub um, with that double hung window that can slide up, allowing that bathing or, um, 
of showering or bathing in that outdoor garden um, relationship. All of the bronze work is raw bronze, so that can battle patina uh, and change over the years. Those small ripples, so the heritage materiality in the left with that minor curve, the new materiality in the right with a slight um, increase in curvature, small details of retained heritage architecture, um, and then a fulcrum joint between the old to new um, from one of, the, one of the bedrooms looking into the social spaces, the outdoor, indoor, outdoor rhythms. And then moving into that washed recycled brickwork um, walls that are picking up the light and glinting through, finding that um, antsy wall, that, that fulcrum light gesture of the skylight, which is that beacon that socially navigates you through. Um, and then that's that dining space held deep into the southern uh, part of the house, but held for that drop of natural daylight. So those, the outdoor palette, uh, I guess, erupts from that hallway and starts to flare out, creating these social spaces of the room. So the dining space, the kitchen, and the living room are all anchored around an elbow cup below that northern sun to come into all of those three spaces. Um, the, the cast recess curtains um, maintain a half circle hook um, holding into the same half circle um, the recess or rebate into that monolithic uh, fireplace bench and taking around that, that same external materiality that erupts in the hallway looking back into that bedroom and that, um, that fulcrum keystone joint from old to new uh, holding those, the layering of those three spaces that are socially independent or socially clear spaces of the room uh, but they're held together as one sequence of uh, rooms including the outdoor room to the right of screen uh, moving through that layering of outdoor, indoor, outdoor gestures from that defensive wall to the left, hooking around to the pool through the end of the screen. And then a quick journey through that pool and outdoor playroom or outdoor social space, moving upwards into one of those retreats. So the material just has changed here. Now we've had a journey of transition from the heritage arrival through to a, uh, a more robust, resilient uh, raw concrete galvanized steel, spotted gun plywood. So materials that allow a letting go and a release away from the city. So more um, hardy, resilient, um, I guess emotionally and intellectually robust materials. Hooking into that curve, this is the, f the curve that has that face off of that principal bedroom with its own um, concentrated piece of natural daylight, but making sure that there's a very clear sense of interiority. So this is um, I, I guess this is brain work, this is mind work, this is a place of study and retreat. Uh, moving back around that journey, back through the hallway, back to the heritage heart or entry of the home. Uh, and that second retreat, um, that vertical sharper skylight on the southern side of the house. Uh, bronze patinated um, metal work for the handrails, luring you up into that um, second uh, immersive dark plywood or spotted gum retreat. Um, for the principal bedroom. So these two spaces are that door, or that stairway going down, um, the door to the social spaces are generally kept open, um, but it's private in its removal from the kids, the three kids sleeping on that lower floor. So it has a sense of re removal without having to close the door. Um, that, uh, that bathroom at the end has that axial gesture from a natural daylight over the wet space to the, the curved half circle courtyard with the natural light behind us. Here we start seeing those uh, small details of deep urban red stone, um, burgundy powder coated steel, having those clarified material gestures amongst that robust um, wood, um, warm, welcoming sanctuary material palette. Um, more of those details, so the bathroom is atomized with the robe. So the sleeping bed space, the robe, the wet area has its functions um, jostled and um, blended. Uh, to make, a, I guess, a more pure sense of, uh, you know, dressing, washing, bathing, sleeping, having those, the independent usage. And turning around, having that sleeping space, having its, its own clear retreat, now entirely removed from the city, entirely removed from Canterbury Road, having that sense of, um, uh, I, I guess, um, relaxation, restoration.